Good day, mates. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we have some huge changes coming to competitive Fortnite, and don't worry, they are both so, so good. We have the Storm Scout sniper rifle getting vaulted in the competitive playlist, and we have performance mode getting fixed. I talked about it in a most recent video, saying that this is how Epic said they wanted performance mode to look, which is mobile builds. All of us were asking, is there a way to get the old performance mode back? Is there a way that we can choose which performance mode we go on to? I didn't think it was possible but it is we're gonna get adjustable performance mode so you can pick whichever one you want to have to make your game run smooth but still look decent let's say decent it's not fantastic but it won't look as bad as mobile also i want to touch on some of the changes we've had in the competitive scene in the last few days specifically in na east we have some big team changes scoped has been dropped has found himself completely without a team and i have to talk about drop spots on na east because it took zate one game and he's already alpha hydro dam Today's video was actually already recorded. I made an entire 15 minute guide on how to get the Storm Scout sniper rifle and how to get the Klinger sniper rifle. And then I went live for stream and I find out they've completely vaulted it. All my footage wasted. I spent four hours on this video, but whatever, it's okay. I'm happy. The Storm Scout sniper rifle is out of the game. How do I know? Because Fortnite tweeted it. Fortnite status tweeted out forecast 0% chance of Storm Scout. We've disabled the Storm Scout sniper rifle from competitive playlists. Thanks to the community for providing feedback. And honestly, I am so happy this happened. The video I made today was ridiculous. If you went back and actually looked at how teams were getting it, basically all you needed was the NPC to spawn at Weeping Woods. That's it. Just the one NPC. And in three minutes, you could have the Storm Scout sniper rifle. Doing three quests and having one of your teammates farm some gold inside weeping not even getting a bounty not even getting a kill guaranteed storm scout so there is a chance that when you look at kyle's spawn rate i dropped there a few times it looked like it was around 30 percent ish i'm not entirely sure but that means even a one third if you were going to play a 12 game format of fncs there's a good chance a team would have had this at least four times and there was other methods to get their hands on this gun anyway so i'm really really happy to see the storm scout taken out of competitive i think everyone except for teams like queasy that were getting it are happy about this as well it doesn't mean all the exotics are gone though the double barrel shotgun the clinger sniper rifle both guns that i've said are very very strong especially the clinger sniper rifle are still in the game now as far as the quad launcher and the slurp chug splash thingy that doesn't look like it's made it into competitive but that might just be because it's that two week cooling off period like we've been hearing about with other items so maybe that could make its way into competitive and i was really scared to see that happen especially with how broken gold is at at craggy right now but i do think that based on them taking the storm scout out i'd be very surprised to see them put those two items in so things are looking good we've only really got yeah the clinger sniper and maybe the double barrel to look out for now this wasn't the only good tweet we got from Fortnite today. We got a tweet letting us know that performance mode is coming back in the way we knew before. The bubble builds or whatever you want to call them. We are getting performance mode back that way, but even better, everyone's going to be happy. We're going to get adjustable performance modes. Let me read through the announcement they made. They said, we've released a maintenance patch on PC to address the recent performance issues for DirectX 12. Now, I ran DirectX 12 all day today after running this patch. It was phenomenal. I didn't crash a single time. There was no weird like strobing of hills and trees. The input delay felt good. My frames felt good. So ultimately DirectX 12 felt amazing but it just didn't feel like performance mode. If you run performance mode, you know what I mean. It's that just negative input delay. Everything just happens. It's so fluid. So they said the patch will be available to download upon opening or relaunching the game. Most of you guys would have done that by now, but the response, this was the big part. Speaking of performance, stay tuned for a future option that'll let you adjust the level of detail of objects in the PC performance mode currently in alpha. So that means you're going to get adjustable performance mode. So I don't know exactly how this is going to look, but it could be to the point where it's like do you want the bubble builds where your builds look you know worse than dx12 and dx11 some people like it but you know a little bit less quality but then you have way less input delay and the game runs better or do you want to ramp it all the way down to mobile builds like it is now so if you're on a, a real struggling setup that you can then run that or we can make it even higher maybe there's an option where it gets closer to direct x11 or 12 but it still runs better either way this is a win-win for everyone no matter how you like your game to look no matter what setup you're on now you're going to be able to cu customize it to make it look like you want this is a huge step in the right direction for things that us in the community have been asking for like custom crosshairs 
an FOV slider, you know, things like that. Being able to customize your game to make it look how you want to fit your setup and your preferences compared to someone else. And it means we don't have to have these huge arguments now. No, give us the old performance mode back. No, I wanna keep the new one. I don't wanna go back to the old one. You know what I mean? Everybody's happy. We had NA East Pro scrims today and we were gonna finally have our questions answered. Who was gonna alpha Hydro Dam? Was it gonna be Zayt Safin Stretch, the pro alphas walking in, Dictator on top, gonna take the Hydro Dam? Or is Dubs, Mega, and Eclipse A gonna hold on to it? We have six Titans in the competitive scene. How did it all boil down? It took one game. Dubs, Mega, and Eclipse A decided they were gonna leave Hydro Dam after the first game. Zayt, Saf, and Stretch, as far as I am aware, have it to themselves. This came on the back of Dubs tweeting it out publicly that he's gonna go to Pleasant Park, which genuinely think is a terrible decision, just in my opinion. Pleasant Park is already not even worth the loot for one team, let alone the fact that it looks like there's technically three teams now there. You're gonna have Dubs, Mega, and Eclipse A. You're gonna have Polarized Team. You're gonna have Ocus, Ronaldo, and Blake. Like, I just don't really know. There's not room for for three teams there's not even room for two teams even if you get it all to yourself it's a decent poi but again i tweeted out zayt's reputation grows stronger he is known for alphaing drops whether you love zayt or you hate zayt zayt is a competitor he'll win at all costs and they knew they were in for a very very ugly spawn fight so they gave it up the question is still is it worth it because clarity uh niddle and mikey who are back together now with uncontested dirty those of you guys in the comments saying that dgen aids and skittles were going to contest them I knew they wouldn't. I just had a feeling they're doing way too well out of Orchard. Turns out they didn't contest them. And in scrims today, Mikey's team looked insane. They really put into question why Zayt left. And I mean, Zayt's team looked okay today. I watched the first five, six games. So if it happened after that, I apologize. But I didn't see them really anywhere in the top three, top five. But again... It's a new drop spot, new rotations. Maybe they're still trying to figure it out. They do have to adapt to the new play style. It is in a completely different area of the map to what they're used to playing in. So even with it uncontested, they're not going to pop off straight away. But it's going to be exciting to see whether they can make it work because they got what they wanted. They got all the loot. They've got Flush Factory as well. They got everything. But is it actually going to be any better than their old drop? Speaking of big teams, you guys have been asking me a whole bunch. What do I think about Booger, Clicks, and Bizzle so far? And it's been kind of tough. They have been struggling. I'm not going to lie. They've been struggling on Surge mostly. They finally got Sweaty uncontested, and it looks like they're doing worse out of it uncontested than contested because pretty much almost every single game, and I'm talking about at least six or seven games, they struggle with their Surge. They either went down because of Surge, or they went down because they had to play aggressively for Surge because they left it too late. Today, though, they looked a little bit better. They got gifted a couple of games where they had some teams kind of pull up next to them that were really low. They got easy surge tags. And when they do get their surge, they look really, really strong coming into the end game, placing top four in both the games that I watched. Uh, there is still that little bit of friction for me and a bit of confusion. It does look like Booger is doing most of the IGLing as much, if not more than Bizzle. So I'm still really confused on that whole I don't want to IGL thing because Booger is definitely not just going into a fragging position. So you've kind of got two players IGLing between Booger and Bizzle. Click's also tapping a little bit endgame and making layer decisions. Either way though, a lot of people freaking out that if they're not doing well, it looks like they might split up. Click's even made the joke on stream that he has to go demon mode today or Booger's gonna leave them. So I don't know whether it's all jokes or whether there is a bit of that kind of friction there. I feel like if you watch them, you'd be able to sense it as well. But there's potential. They are looking like they could do really well. They've just got to get a few pieces together. And I don't like to judge a team's performance until I can see them consistently making endgame and how they play that. Storm Surge, while being a huge factor of the game, usually just comes down to finding different routes, just having different setups and changing the mentality on the game. It's one of the easier things to fix. And it's really the main thing they're struggling on right now. So if they overcome that hurdle, then we'll see how they go consistently playing into their endgames. The other big team announcement is unfortunately Unfortunately, a sad one for a player that I've had really high hopes for. I keep saying in my videos, I want to see Scoped find a team that's willing to grind with him, get him back to the point of being one of the best players in the region like I know and most people know he can be because he is one of the most loyal pros and he's super hard working right now. But yet again, Scoped has found himself being snaked. It was a bit of an awkward one. I didn't follow it completely. So if any of this is wrong, I apologize. But it looked like Nut first off snaked on Scoped and Zypher, which 
left scoped and Zypher looking for a third, but then Zypher decided to then go with Nut, who picked up Twexy. So I believe we now have scope. Uh, we now have Zypher, Twexy, and Nut, and then I think Scoped is now going to be going with Has. I heard from some pretty reliable sources, but until they play scrims or tournaments, I won't really know. I just want to see, like I said, Scoped find a good team, and even if they're not top top tier now and they don't win the first FNCS, I have really high hopes for them for the whole year if they can stick together. I mean, again, look at the teams. Degen, Ages, and Skittles are one of the biggest up-and-coming teams coming into this FNCS because they've been playing together for so long. Jack, Acorn, and Slacks, same thing. Zate, Saf, and Stretch. You know, it is. Consistency pays off. Teams that stick together and build together will win together. A lot of people seem to be forgetting that when Fortnite announced the FNCS prize pool, they said that $12 million of the $20 million was going to go into four FNCSs, but that leaves $8 million that they specifically said is going to go to tournaments, one of which of the ways to qualify for those huge tournaments is by playing consistently through multiple FNCSs with the same team. If you don't stick with the same team, you don't get invited. So I want to see some of these pros and some of these teams just find players that they at least get along well with, have huge potential potential and are all motivated to grind together because again if you don't win the first FNCS you could win these massive tournaments at the end of the year and the last FNCSs. We finally have Fortnite established as a full esport with one competitive game mode for a full year. I want to see the pros really get on board with that. Before I end today's video, I have to apologize to my EU fans. I'm sorry, guys. I know the EU video is coming. I spent four hours this morning. I got up at 6 a.m. to record today's video, which was supposed to be a full Storm Scout sniper rifle and Klinger sniper rifle guide. I had all the footage done, all uploaded with my editor, and then that announcement came out. So I am now recording this as of 10 o'clock at night, and I've already been streaming for 10 hours on top of that four-hour recording. So I apologize, but I want to do EU right. I want to make sure the video is full quality and I want to make sure I have all my facts straight before I do it. So it is coming. I promise you, I apologize. But thank you so much for watching. If you liked today's video, please chuck a like on it. Let me know in the comment section down below if you agree with the Storm Scout sniper rifle being taken out. I feel like it'd be hard for you to disagree, but if you do, let me know. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It would mean so much to me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.